Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of diverticulitis. So we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms that occur in diverticulitis and why they occur. So to begin, I want to briefly talk about what diverticulitis is. Diverticulitis is a gastrointestinal disorder involving inflammation of diverticula, or outpouchings of the colon or large intestine. So what does that all mean? What are diverticula and what is the large intestine? So here is the gastrointestinal system, including the stomach, leading into the small intestine, leading into the large intestine. Now, the large intestine here, this is what gets affected in diverticulitis. And I mentioned that diverticular are outpouchings. Now, if we were to zoom up, so we can zoom up in this area here, we see it here. So here's the large intestine, and we get these little outpouchings, these little bulges in the large intestine wall. And this is actually due to weakened bowel wall. So as people get older and due to chronic issues with constipation and low fiber diets, the walls of the large intestine become weak. So when the walls of the large intestine become weak, pressure and contraction in the large intestine can lead to little pouches popping out because of the weakened wall. And these are the diverticula. And these little diverticula become inflamed into diverticulitis when a piece of feces can block the opening to the diverticula. So once there's a piece of feces that blocks, the opening to the diverticula can lead to inflammation. And the diverticula can become inflamed and swollen. And this part of the large intestine right here, the sigmoid colon, is a common place where we can see diverticula. And that will become important when we talk about where we see symptoms of diverticulitis in the next slide. So let's talk about signs and symptoms of diverticulitis. The first one is abdominal pain. This is the most important, most common symptom in diverticulitis. So I want to briefly talk about where we have pain in diverticulitis. So if we look straight on to someone's abdomen, this would be the right side of the patient. This would be the left side of the patient. We actually have to break down the abdomen into quadrants. So that can help us when determining the location of the abdominal pain. So we break it down. We put a cross essentially right through the belly button or the umbilicus. So this would be the right upper quadrant. Again, this is the right side of the patient. Right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. And again, this is important because we're going to use these terms when we describe where the pain occurs in diverticulitis. And in fact, the left lower quadrant is the most common location where we see abdominal pain in diverticulitis. Because again, that's where we talked about the sigmoid colon being, and diverticula can form in the sigmoid colon and become inflamed there. And interestingly, the left lower quadrant, that location is more common in Western populations. So Western populations who have diverticulitis are more likely to have abdominal pain in the left lower quadrant. And the reason I say that is because we can also see right lower quadrant pain occurring in diverticulitis as well. But we see this more commonly in Asian populations. And this may appear like appendicitis. Your appendix is right here as well. But it's more likely to be diverticulitis if the pain is lasting more than three days. So again, left lower quadrant is the most common location where we see abdominal pain in diverticulitis, and it's even more common in Western populations. And in the right lower quadrant, if you see pain there, it's more common in Asian populations with diverticulitis, and it can appear like appendicitis. And the pain is constant. This is a constant pain. And the pain may be diffuse. So although I talk about it being in these locations, it may look like it spreads up into other areas as well. So again, it's constant. And if you were to push on someone's abdomen in one of these locations, it can be tender, very, very tender. So again, it's constant pain and it's tender to touch. And the pain may be diffuse if it is a very severe case of diverticulitis. Now, the next symptom we're going to talk about with regards to diverticulitis is bowel habit changes. So bowel habit changes can either be constipation and or diarrhea. So there can be either constipation or diarrhea. Constipation is more common. Diarrhea can also occur, and there could be a mix of both. So we're going to look at the Bristol stool chart here in a moment just to describe what constipation is and what diarrhea is. So Bristol stool chart type 4 stool would be the normal stool, and then type 1 to type 3 would be constipated stool, and type 5 to type 7 would be the diarrhea. So with diverticulitis, you can see issues with constipation, so type 1 to type 3 on the Bristol stool chart. And then with regards to diarrhea, it can be type 5 to type 7. And in diverticulitis, constipation is more common than diarrhea, but you can have both, and it can alternate. So there's a change in bowel habits with diverticulitis. 
We can also see nausea and vomiting occurring in diverticulitis as well. This may be caused by the abdominal pain, so if it's a very severe case, it could lead to very severe abdominal pain and lead to nausea and vomiting. But what is really worrisome when we see nausea and vomiting in diverticulitis is obstruction. So it could be secondary to obstruction. Now, what is obstruction? So we looked at this image before of diverticula becoming inflamed and becoming swollen. Well, if the diverticula becomes so swollen, so it's a very severe case of diverticulitis, they become so swollen that it can actually block off the large intestine, that would be obstruction. So no passage of stool would occur and things would start to back up. So it back up through into the large intestine, into the small intestine, and so on. And this can lead to nausea and vomiting. So it is an obstruction that can cause nausea and vomiting. So again, nausea and vomiting can occur in diverticulitis. Not often, but it can. And it could be caused by abdominal pain, but it could be caused by obstruction, where one diverticula, very large diverticula, becomes very, very inflamed and actually blocks off the large intestine, obstructs it. So no stool can actually pass beyond that point, and it leads to a backup and eventual nausea and vomiting. Now, because this is inflammation, diverticulitis, it's inflammation of diverticula, we can see fever. So again, it's caused by inflammation. So inflammation can lead to a fever. We can also see where some cases there can be micro perforations or even a larger perforation from the diverticula. So the walls of the diverticula are a bit weak. And if it becomes so inflamed, so enlarged, these little diverticula can actually break. A little hole can form and feces can actually escape from the large intestine. So you can get feces bacteria entering into the sites surrounding the large intestine. This can lead to infection and lead to a fever as well. So these are very severe cases. So you want to make sure that you catch these types of perforations where it leads to possible abscess or sepsis. So Again, fever can occur due to inflammation, but it could also be due to infection. So it could be due to both inflammation and or infection. And then with the fever, we can also see a high heart rate. So high heart rate is also known as tachycardia. So you can get a fever with tachycardia. And other symptoms that are very, very important to recognize in diverticulitis is urinary urgency, frequency, and dysuria. So what does all of that mean? So it feels like you need to urinate more often, more quickly, so you feel like you really have to run to the bathroom quick. And then sometimes you have a burning sensation. So it kind of sounds like a urinary tract infection, but it's not. And the reason this is important is because it can be confused with a urinary tract infection, a UTI. So the reason this happens is because a diverticula can form in the sigmoid colon, in this area here. And your bladder is in this location as well. It's actually in front of the large intestine. So if there's a very, very large diverticula that becomes inflamed, it can actually push on the bladder and it can make an individual feel like they have to really go pee more often and more frequently and can make them feel like they have to really go quickly. And it can actually lead to burning sensation as well. So this can be confused with a urinary tract infection if you were just to look at these symptoms. But when you look at the whole picture with a constant abdominal pain in the left lower quadrant or the right lower quadrant with fever and some of those other symptoms we talked about, changes in bowel habits. So then you can actually see that these symptoms, urinary urgency, frequency, and dysuria are actually due to diverticulitis. So that is the reason. So very important to recognize this. Urinary urgency, frequency, and dysuria can look like a urinary tract infection if those are the only symptoms you see. But with diverticulitis, you're going to have all those other symptoms we talked about before. You're going to have that constant abdominal pain with possible fever and changes in bowel habits, and that will all tie into diverticulitis. So if you want more information on diverticulitis, please check my full lesson on that topic. And if you want more information on other ways to reduce your risk of diverticulitis, please check out my lesson on that topic as well. If you found this lesson helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.